Hello, everybody, and welcome to version two of my item and equipment tier list. This list is a complete overhaul with tons of updates to existing items as well as the new additions from the June update. To give context, the ratings each item receives is based off my own experience of over 300 hours on Monsoon difficulty alone. I've streamlined the ranks to only include the following S, A, B, C, D, and F in order from highest to lowest rank. There are no longer any in between ranks such as B plus or C minus, and rather I'll just go over the reasoning for each rank in a little more detail. This is pretty much just to avoid any confusion. Now, there are some items that have multiple ranks, such as Fungus being higher on Engineer than everybody else, and Topaz Brooch placing differently on Rex, but for the most part, it should be a bit easier to follow. Lastly, there is a ton of context that goes into which items to choose from a multi-shop or printer in a run, so an item's rank doesn't necessarily reflect its usefulness at all times. Rather, think of the ranks as well as their explanations as insight on what's going to give you the most bang for your buck more often than not. Also, do not avoid picking up low rank items because they will be extremely useful to trade into 3D printers at the very least. There are a few exceptions, but we'll cover those in detail. And one more thing, if you enjoy the background footage or need some clarification on the items or just really have any other questions, you could check out my stream at twitch.tv slash woollygaming. You can also join our Discord server. The links to both are in the description and the pinned comment below. All right, long intro for a long video. My apologies, and let's get started with the common items. Starting off, we have the Soldier Syringe. I'm gonna give it an A. Now, yes, attack speed is very useful, but in my experience, having a predatory instincts, Zerka pauldrons, and the newly added Warhorn are more efficient, meaning I usually stop at around 10 syringes in any run. Still a great item, but not quite worthy of an S. Next, we have tougher times. I will give this one an S. Bears are absolutely amazing. And again, you really only need about 10 of them, which is 60% block chance to truly feel their power. Just know that the exact formula is actually much different than what the item describes. I'll put it on screen now. And the more bears you have, the less effective they are, but it does not diminish that teddy bears are the ultimate form of mitigation. Moving on to the monster tooth, I'm going to get a D on the mercenary and an F on everybody else. Even with the 50% buff that the June update brought, monster tooth sadly still is one of the worst items in the game. Not only is it situational, meaning you only get the effect from killing monsters, the HP restore is far too low and the orbs have to be collected basically from melee range. Hence, it is slightly better on mercenary. Slightly. For the rest of the survivors, only pick this thing up to print it into other items and do not go out of your way to pick up the healing orbs. It's just bad. Next up, lens maker glasses. They get an S. Critical strikes apply to almost every form of damage in the game, the only exception being DOTs like bleeds and ignites and drones. So if you think about it, getting one pair of glasses is essentially 10% more damage for everything you have. Critical strikes double your damage, which is essentially 100% more damage. One pair of glasses adds 10% chance to crit, so 10% of 100 is 10% more damage, essentially. There is no benefit from going over 100% critical strike chance, so your cap with crit is nine glasses plus one predatory instincts as well as a harvester scythe, which each give an invisible 5% crit chance. Very strong item and definitely deserves an S. The Goat Hoof also deserves an S tier. The upgrade to S from A is due to mobility being the number one factor in staying alive in a given run, and Goat Hoofs give you mobility at all times. Compare that to the Energy Drink, which we'll cover in a bit, which only occurs while sprinting. Lots of play styles revolve around spamming abilities and attacks, most of which cannot be done while sprinting, so getting the mobility from Hooves is extremely important. The Fungus gets an S on the Engineer and a D on everybody else. No surprise here, Fungus is amazing on the Engineer due to his turrets always being stationary and therefore always getting the healing bonus. For the rest, however, the only time you need to be stationary is to purchase something, and even then, if you're standing still long enough for the fungus to kick in, you'll get sworn by enemies shortly after, so it is absolutely not worth the tiny health recovery you get for the few seconds of standing still. Crowbar is an A on burst builds and a C for every other time. Crowbar is a great little extra bit of damage and is very useful on burst builds, such as relying on a royal capacitor for most of your damage. Once you get the target to below 90% HP, however, the item is rendered completely useless, so its overall effectiveness is definitely limited. So I give it an A in burst situations and a C at all other times. It just helps blow through an enemy starting HP a tad bit faster. Nothing really special. The tri-tip dagger is still going to be a B for me. The bleed is okay at earlier stages, but absolutely falls off past the first loop. As I stated in the crit glasses explanation, DOTs cannot crit, and this is due to them dealing damage based off of your base damage instead of total damage. All other on-hit effects now scale off total damage, meaning their ceiling is much higher than base damage procs. Also like crit chance, going over 100% bleed chance provides no benefit. It. So, due to the damage being okay early on, I'll get the try tip a B. War Banner, on the other hand, gets a D. Sadly, the War Banner is too situational to get a higher rank. Yes, the bonus it provides is nice, especially when dealing with the teleporter bosses in the first loop, but leveling up becomes a rarity in the later stages at best, so you'll hardly see banners at all. Add in the fact that the radius is quite small, lower stack sizes, and the usefulness of the banner becomes extremely limited at best, so it gets a D. Cautious Slug, I'm going to bump all the way up to an 
A now. I vastly underestimated the slug on my first tier list. The region it provides is top notch and will always be in effect so long as you are not taking damage. The slug's heal is based off your base health regeneration, so if paired with a couple titanic neurals, the healing from two or three slugs can easily get you to full HP within a few seconds. Outside of scythes and 100% crit chance healing, I say that the slug is the most consistent form of healing in the game, so it gets an easy A. Personal shield generator gets an F. Now, you may be surprised at the rank, but the reasoning is simply this. It messes up literally the best combo in the entire game, stacking shaped glass. Now, I'll get into all the details when we cover shaped glass, but basically, due to not being able to regen and more importantly, leech shields, the benefit it seems to provide actually straight up enables you to die. Again, the details will be when we talk about shaped glass. The 25 shield you get is absolutely not worth the inability to leech or regen normally, so for that, it gets an F. Medkit, I'm also going to bump up quite a bit. It gets an A in the early game and a C the rest of the time. Similar to the slug, I vastly underestimated the usefulness of medkits, especially early on in a run. On Monsoon especially, grabbing an early medkit or two, or 20, will make your life so much easier. The only downside is that the heal, which occurs after 1.1 seconds of being hit, will not proc if you are still taking damage, meaning if you are still being hit or under a DOT, the medkit will not pop. This also goes for Rex's self-damaging capabilities, so just remember you can't endlessly spam M2 on on him and expect the medkit to continually proc. Gasoline is still a C for me. Now, early on, gasoline is extremely useful because it is the most common form of AoE you'll see. A lot of characters like Multi, Commando, and Mercenary struggle with huge groups of enemies and the gasoline helps take them out faster. However, as stated before, DOTs are only affected by base damage and gasoline's damage isn't that high anyway, so due to its poor scaling past the first loop as well as being situational, you need to kill things, it gets a C for me. Stun Grenade also gets a C. I've come to like the Stun Grenade a little bit more than before. Yes, you cannot stun bosses and once you get past like stage nine, lots of the enemies that spawn will be a boss monster. So imp overlords, titans, magworms, etc. Those are all boss monsters. But the ability for your other on hit items to proc the stun, notably the ones that chain to many enemies like the Tesla and the ukulele, the stun grenade helps pin down large threats like elite golems, bisons, and elder lemurians. Definitely has its uses, so it gets a C. The fireworks also have a C. Nothing new here. Yes, you can print them and cheese the entire map by opening a single barrel, but that requires a lot of other on hit items to function and, well, is really a cheese tactic and nothing else. Realistically, they help you do some random damage to a random enemy and require interacting with an item to proc it, so I'll give it a C. Energy drinks are going to get an A. As stated for the goat hoof, mobility is key to staying alive, therefore the energy drink gets a high rank. However, you only get the effect while sprinting, and in most high stakes situations, you'll really want to focus on DPSing and jumping and strafing around, not constantly hitting your sprint key because you took all energy drinks and no goat hooves. Most characters can sprint while doing many actions, like the Artificer's M2 and Engineer's M1, so you should always be in the habit of sprinting, but again, as soon as you stop sprinting, you lose the bonus of the energy drink. Therefore, it is still extremely good, but not quite as good as the hooves, so an A from me. Backup Mag has quite a few ranks here. It gets an S on the Huntress and Artificer, a D on the Engineer, and a B on everybody else. Backup Mag is a bit of a mixed bag, as you can tell. On the Huntress and Artificer, your secondary ability is providing a rather large chunk of your overall damage, and therefore the mag is amazing to have. With Rex, his M2 is also extremely strong, but the cooldown is so short that the Backup Mag really doesn't add much benefit to them. For the Engineer, while the M2 is pretty useful, the mag only adds a single mine to your base value of 10, meaning it is literally 10% as effective on the Engineer. Finally, on everyone else, it's okay. It does not give you any cooldown reduction on your M2, meaning you'll be waiting for charges to come back at the same rate no matter what, so it isn't too great. Here we go, boys. Sticky Bomb gets a D. Oh, how the mighty hath fallen. With the June update, not only was the starting damage brought down to 180 from 250%, but the scaling damage was removed in entirely, meaning that with each additional sticky bomb, you were only getting an increased chance to proc them and not any more damage. Now, yes, technically increased chance to proc does correlate to increased damage, but if we start taking that kind of math into account, the first sticky bomb you pick up gives you about a 9% overall damage increase, 5% chance to proc, dealing 180% total damage, and 5% of 180 is 9, so you can basically think of one bob as adding 9% to your overall damage. However, each additional sticky only adds additional 4.5% damage because it's 2.5% percent chance to proc so just take half of nine and on top of that once you hit 100 percent chance to proc at 38 bombs they are literally useless and will not benefit your overall damage any further compare that to most other on hits which receive increased damage per stack and not increased chance to proc and you can start to see why stickies are now the worst on hit in the game rusted key is not an on hit but it also gets a d while the stun grenade has grown on me a bit the rusted key has done the opposite looking for the tiny box it spawns on each stage is not worth the time nor the item you receive yes if you stack this item enough and i'm talking 
talking like 30 plus decks, you can almost guarantee a legendary item every stage, but sacrificing literally any other common aside from maybe stickies and shield generators will absolutely hinder your run more than help. Therefore, I don't recommend printing these ever and definitely avoid buying them at multi shops. If you get one or two, cool, but do not go out of your way for the free chest it spawns and just think of it as a nice bonus if you manage to find it. Armor piercing rounds are a B. They saw a 50% buff with this patch, increasing to 20% additional damage per stack from 10. Now, you will still end up taking large amounts of time fighting everything but the teleporter boss past like the first loop, but the ability to plow through the boss can't be overlooked, especially now with the extremely dangerous Malachite enemies, which prevent you from healing for eight seconds when they hit you. So I'll give them a B. One of the new items here, the old guillotine gets an S. Piggybacking off of the reasoning for armor piercing, being able to instantly kill elites under a threshold of HP is crazy powerful, especially when you consider, again, the danger of Malachite enemies, but also that any elite monster can be executed with this. Meaning, if a teleporter boss is also an elite monster, so if the title has overloading, blazing, glacial, or Malachite in it, that's an elite enemy, they can be executed, which is extremely powerful. But again, most of your time is fighting everything but the teleporter boss, and past the first loop, especially most, if not all, dangerous enemies are elites, making the guillotine an absolutely crazy item. It should be noted that, like teddy bears, the effect is not quite as it is worded here. The plus 5% execute threshold functions similar to bear scaling, being less effective the more stacks you get. I'll put up a picture now of what it actually is. Getting 17 guillotines does not execute elites instantly, as it would if the 5% chance was just a straight linear bonus. Regardless, the item is extremely powerful and definitely deserves an S. The other new item here is Topaz Brooch, and it gets an A. Now, Brooch is extremely powerful, but due to the barriers to depletion rate being pretty high, as well as really only going up to crazy values with quite a few stacks, I'm giving it an A instead of an S. The max barrier you can have is 100% of your health, so the brooch can theoretically double your HP, but in reality, due to the lack of consistency, does not really function that way. The devs have confirmed that barrier is separate from your maximum health stat, meaning one-shot protection is not affected by the amount of barrier you have. If you didn't know, one-shot protection is a mechanic that is built into the game, where you cannot die to a single instance of damage if you are at or above 90 percent of your combined max health. The combined part is especially important, but again, we'll cover why when we talk about shaped glass. Just know that barrier is not considered when one shot protection is in play. In conclusion, the brooch is very powerful and gets another easy A. Moving on to the uncommon items or green, the ATG missile launcher is an S. Yep, you heard it right. ATGs are an S now. Remember how sticky bombs are essentially a 9% overall damage boost and add about 4.5% for every stack after the first? Well, ATGs are a 30% overall damage boost and for every stack you get, not just the first one. Obviously, it is a completely different rarity, common versus uncommon, but getting just six ATGs is the same damage as completely maxing out sticky bombs at 38 stacks. Six versus 38. Think about it. On top of that, there is no hard cap, unlike the sticky bombs, which stop at 100% chance to proc. Each additional ATG provides more damage, not increased chance, which theoretically can keep going infinitely. However, you will definitely not feel any real boost in power past like 12 stacks, but the overall effectiveness of just two or three ATGs is absolutely massive for your overall damage and definitely deserves an S. Will of the Wisp gets an A. Like the gasoline, wisps are pretty situational, but unlike gasoline, wisp damage is instant, meaning the ability to wipe out dangerous groups of enemies is much higher than gas due to the front-loaded damage. Not only that, but the scaling potential of wisps is very high due to receiving increased damage and area effect for each stack, making it a very powerful tool for clearing a map. The Hopu Feather also gets an A. Mobility is good. Hapu Feather gives you an extra jump. Jumping is mobility. Mobility is good. Feather is good. A. But no, seriously, with an extra jump, or two or 20. It is very powerful, especially on low mobility characters like Artificer and Multi. You should always be jumping around when fighting enemies, so the Hopu Feather is an amazing item to get. Ukulele is an S. Ukulele is still the best green item in the game to me. The actual damage the ukulele deals is irrelevant. The reason it gets an S is due to the ability to proc your other on-hit items. I'll put a link to the entire wiki page with all items that can proc other items, but the gist is this. Every item and really everything in the game has a proc coefficient. This number dictates how often often the item can activate, we just call it proc, your other items. If the item has a proc coefficient of zero, it can never proc other items. If it has a proc coefficient of one, it does not mean it will always proc the item, but rather it will proc them at their usual rate. Meaning if I have some ATG missiles, which are a 10% chance to proc regardless of how many you have, the item with 1.0 proc coefficient will trigger ATG missiles 10% of the time. Knowing how many on-hit items are in the game, you can quickly see how powerful this process becomes. So the fact
fact that ukulele hits multiple enemies and hits more enemies at a further distance with more stacks means it is very, very, very powerful. Easiest S of my life. Leeching Seed, I'm bumping down to a C on everybody except for the Artificer. It gets a D. The one HP recovered per hit is negligible at best. Honestly, that's all the info you need. Even on Rex, who is literally damaging himself itself, he's a plant robot thingy, right? It's him. I don't know. She, man, I don't know, dude. The effect is still hardly noticeable. They are easily outclassed by another item, which we'll talk about in literally just a second, and C on everybody who is not the Artificer. Hey, have I ever told you that Artificer doesn't heal as much as other classes due to not attacking nearly as often? No? Well, that's why he gets a D, okay? <laughs> Some of you know why I'm whispering this. Predatory Instincts gets an A. When we talked about crit glasses, I said Predatory and Scythe give an invisible 5% chance to crit, which they do. Being able to gain more value out of the critical strikes is amazing with the bonus attack speed. Stacking a few Predatories will see you start shooting like a complete madman. A. Red Whip gets an F. Hey, guess what? This item sucks. I was going to give it a D, but nope, it doesn't deserve it. Yep, you go faster with it. Yes, that's cool. But if you perform any action to do with combat, you will lose the movement speed. Yes, anything. Can you tell I'm frustrated? The best way to put it is that as playing the mercenary, you should be using your skills to get around the map faster because they each give you a boost and momentum aside from his regular attack. Even if you do not hit anything with the ability, the simple act of using it will cancel the red whip's effect because it is related to combat. Notice the item reads while out of combat and not while out of danger like the cautious slug. At all other times, guess what will probably be happening to you? If you guessed being hit by monsters, then you are absolutely correct. Even if you block the hit with teddy bears, the effect will still cancel. As soon as you use an ability or shoot a monster, the effect will cancel. Absolute garbage item. You know what? F minus tier. I'm gonna bring back the minus just to give it to the red whip. This item sucks. Old War Stealth Kit gets an A. Okay, whew, pretty good item. Thank you. On Rex, this may have to get an S because the constant damaging of plant robot self means that the stealth kit will be up quite a lot of the time. In all other situations, immediately dropping the aggro of monsters when this procs will definitely save your life once, if not many times in a given run. If a titan is lasering you and the stealth kit goes off, he will stop lasering you. If a BBC, blazing brass contraption, come on guys, is throwing his balls at you, <laughs> okay, that was intentional, then it will stop as soon as you go invisible. Awesome item all around the board, easy A. Harvester Sights gets an A as well. Crits are cool. Healing from crits is even cooler. Invisible 5% crit chance is very cool. It's not leeching seed, instant A rating. No, but really, capping your crit, which is 100%, and stacking a few scythes is easily the best form of healing in the game. Start to add on some rejuve racks and or aegises and your survivability goes through the roof. Scythe is an absolute pleasure of a sight to see, so A. Fuel Cell gets an S. An extra charge of equipment and reduced cooldown reduction per stack. Need I say any more? Well, yes, actually. The 15% per stack is multiplicative and not a flat amount, meaning you will not have 30% cooldown reduction from two fuel cells. Again, specific links to item stacking and proc coefficients are in the description. Infusion gets an A on every Everybody except for the engineer where it gets a C. Getting additional health is always great except in one case which also happens to be the shaped glass which again we'll cover a bit later. The only downside is engineer's turrets literally yoinking the stacks from you if they get the kill meaning you'll lose out on a stack if a turret kills an enemy because they inherit your items. Other than that pretty solid item A. The bandolier gets an A on the mercenary and a B on everybody else. Resetting cooldowns is great. Yes you have to be pretty close to the monsters to pick it up but the range is much greater than the orbs from monster tooth and you'll just end up walking over a few of them when you're actually just killing monsters regularly and be like, hey, my skills are suddenly available. Let's use them again. So it's pretty cool item. B on everybody except for Mercenary who is literally a melee character and thus will be grabbing them more often. So he gets an A. Berserker Pauldron also gets a B on everybody. This item is fairly situational, but once you get past the first loop and especially the second, its bonuses will be up more often than not. And, it, and thus it's an okay item. You mainly want the massive attack speed boost to provide because once you're at the point where it's up all the time, chances are you have much more than plus 50% to your movement speed and thus it won't feel as impactful for the mobility part. B on everybody. Rose Buckler gets an A on everybody except for Multi, Commando, and Rex where it gets a B. So on everybody but Multi, Commando, and Rex, you can basically be sprinting at all times. Therefore, the bonus from the Buckler is pretty much up at all times. Plus 25 armor is quite a significant buff with 200 armor being a 66% damage reduction just for context. For the survivors I just mentioned, they can't sprint nearly as often due to always using their attacks so it gets a B on them. A on everybody else. The Ice and Fire ban, Runald's ban and Kiaro's ban. Ice gets an A, Fire gets an S. Ice and Fire ban are both very good items. Runald's is the Ice one, deals less damage than Kiaro's. However, an interesting mechanic hidden behind them is that if one ban procs, the other will always proc with it. So as long as you have at least one stack of both bans, they will always go off with one another. It is not quite a doubling of the proc chance, so you don't get a theoretical 16% chance to proc when you have both, but rather it works the same as the 57 Leaf Clover formula, which is very close to 
twice the odds, but not quite. Again, I believe the actual chance is like 15.4% instead of 16. Anyway, both bands are great, but because the fire does more damage, it gets an S while ice is an A. Chronobobble gets a D. Hey, this item also sucks, just like the Red Whip, just not as much. Now, if slowing an enemy meant their attack and animation speeds as well as their movement speed, then this thing would be nuts. However, it doesn't. It just slows movement speed. Setting up enemies isn't too hard for most characters, and the slow ends up just keeping them where they already are, but just moving slower. So even for AOE purposes and grouping monsters to easily kill, the slow it provides is irrelevant. Pretty bad item, so it gets the D. I mean, uh, AD. Its rank is a D, okay? Wax Quell gets an A. Again, mobility is super good. The distance Wax Quell pushes you is absolutely amazing for kiting enemies around. Like the Hofu Feather, mobility items on immobile survivors like Artificer and Multi are especially strong, and the Wax Quell is definitely no exception. Easy A. Warhorn gets a C. The newly added Warhorn provides a 70% attack speed boost for 8 seconds when you use your equipment. This is a highly situational item, even more so than like the Zerker Pauldron, and really only shows its strength when you have it permanently in effect. Getting an equipment down to a sub 10 second cycle time is not impossible, but definitely isn't an every run thing either. Therefore, I'll put it at a C due to it just being too situational. Before we get into the legendary items, let me preface by saying there are a lot of strong red items. Therefore, there will be quite a few S ranks. Just keep that in mind, okay? Starting with the Brilliant Behemoth, it gets an S. Think of the 60% damage Behemoth provides as 60% more overall damage because it also affects your on-hit items, making the item very powerful. As with all red items, just one stack is extremely strong, and in fact, more stacks of Behemoth doesn't really do much for it, so I'd recommend sticking with just one. Of course, if you get another as a random drop, then absolutely pick it up, but don't go out of your way to print these. The Ceremonial Daggers also get an S. The Dagger AI was cleaned up a bit in the Scorched Acres patch, and the scaling was changed to add the damage of each dagger rather than the number of daggers that are created. The overall usefulness is pretty much exactly the same, if not better than before, so daggers absolutely receive an S ranking due to their ability to clear the entire screen from proccing your on-hit items. Frost Relic gets a D. Frost Relic, sadly, is the polar opposite of daggers. Yes, it was buffed in the most recent patch, but honestly, they could make this thing do 10 times its current damage, and I still wouldn't pick it up. Okay, maybe with like 10 times the damage, but that's never gonna happen. The fact that it can explode clay pots and barrels next to you means that if a situation ever happens where two explodey things are near you and you're like 60 minutes into the run, chances are you're dead because they do a lot of damage. I'd rather not pick up an item that kills me, so D tier. Happiest Mask also gets a D. They changed something to do with the number of friendly units that can spawn on the screen, which fixed the terrible frame rate issues I and many others had when using Happiest Mask with like a clover in later stages. However, the item is still garbage because the friendly AI in general in Risk of Rain 2 do not do what you want them to do. They get stuck, they target the wrong enemies, and even when they do target something you want, they tickle their toes <laughs> instead of pump them full of lead. What I'm trying to say is the ghost, it spawns are useless and so is this item. Unlike Frost Relic, however, it cannot kill you, so I will still pick it up because there is really no downside. The Head Stomper gets a C. The increased jump height actually is a detriment to me more often than not, and really the only thing useful about it is negating fall damage, which is a hidden attribute of the item. This also means that if you fall off the map, you will not take any damage when you are teleported back inbounds due to that damage being fall damage. Yes, you can cheese bosses with the Head Stomp, but setting it up requires a bit of time and especially focus, both of which will get you killed if slacked on in a later stage. How jumping works in this game is that the instant you press spacebar, your vertical movement is literally at the absolute highest value it can be, and that value rapidly decays back to zero and then in the opposite direction, as in you go high, you go back down. Basically, if you start off with tons of momentum and quickly lose it, if you increase the jump height, you are simply increasing the time it takes for this momentum to reach zero, which ultimately results in a feeling best described as the higher you go, the more sluggish it feels. Now, there is an exception to this sluggishness, which a lot of people just call the jump trick, where if you initiate a jump on a slanted or sloped surface, you will essentially bounce off of that surface and cause your momentum to stay at its absolute max value over a much larger time frame. It's essentially a super jump. So all I'm trying to say is this, the item feels terrible for the general movement and jumping unless you use it for the super jump. The super jump isn't even that useful, so by extension, the item really isn't that useful either due to just making you feel slow in the air. It gets a C. Nukahana's opinion gets an A on the engineer and a C on everybody else. The item's description is a a little weird, but it equates to this. You do damage based on how much you heal. The more stacks of this item you have, the more often you deal the damage. The range at which these little green skulls fire off is quite low. Not quite melee range, but definitely close enough that it doesn't feel comfortable for anyone other than Engineer and Mercenary, in my opinion. Mercenary because he's melee, obviously, and Engineer because his turrets get the item and are always going to be close to enemies and thus fire the skulls. Not to mention the insane amount of healing turrets have if you have a few fungi, and it comes no secret that Nukahana's plus fungus on Engineer is a crazy good combo. A on him and Mercenary, and C on the rest. The Tesla Coil gets an S. Tesla
Tesla, much like the ukulele, chains off of multiple enemies and also procs your on-hit items. Really, the only difference is the consistency with Tesla being on a cycle and not necessarily requiring to be procced like the ukulele. Now, it won't go off if there isn't an enemy around, but the range is big enough that if there is something remotely close, it will be zapping it. Don't worry. S tier. 57 Leaf Clover is the best item in the game, in my opinion. S tier for sure. The effect of Clover is literally adding one luck to your character, and the luck stat essentially rerolls anything that has a chance to happen and does not happen the first time. As in, let's say you have one sticky bomb at 5% chance to proc, okay? If you do not roll the 5% successfully, the Clover will simply re-roll that 5% chance. Again, like the ice and fire band combo, it's not quite a doubling of the odds, but is regardless very powerful. It literally affects any and every item you have aside from teddy bears because that would be too broken. I'll also throw this in because I've been asked quite a few times, the Clover has no effect on your chance at getting loot from chests. Absolutely no effect. Still, best item in the game. The sentient meat hook also gets an S. I vastly underestimated this item in my first tier list, but quickly found out its usefulness. Essentially, it becomes a free primordial cube, the black hole equipment, which we'll talk about in a bit, that procs every few seconds at worst and every couple hits at best. Again, like other multi-enemy effects, the damage on the item is irrelevant and the rather the multi-enemy hits and especially its ability to proc your other on-hit items makes it crazy powerful. Mostly the AoE black hole grab thing though, it's an amazing item. The alien head gets an S on the Rex and Artificer, and an A on everybody else. On everyone but Rex, who's the new character, and Artificer, this item is A tier. Your abilities are useful, but aren't your primary sources of damage or the main factors in your run's strength. Now, yes, obviously your abilities are important, but for the most part, the items you receive dictate your run strength and not the character you choose, meaning the cooldown only affecting your skills isn't like insanely broken. Again, it definitely is useful, but just not crazy. However, for the Artificer and Rex, your abilities absolutely define your run. Thus, Alien Head is a bit more more useful on them. Just one alien head puts Rex's R, his primary source of healing, at permanent uptime. Pretty sweet. And yes, a full character guide for Rex will be coming out within a week or so. Don't worry, I'm still learning how to play him as of now. So alien head is an X on Rex, an artificer, and A on everybody else. The soulbound catalyst also gets an S. Your equipment is a huge factor in determining the strength of your run. To me, there are two options, healing or damage, no others. Yes, some of the items provide cool effects like the cube and chrysalis, black hole and flying respectively. But for the most part, your equipment needs to be keeping you alive in one way or another. The two best ways are from it healing you a ton or dealing tons of damage, not by some gimmick that you can't fully control. I'll get into more details when discussing equipment rankings, but just know that your equipment is very powerful and the one you choose is very important. That being said, an item that keeps your equipment up more often is very good. Hey, look at that. If you kill something, your equipment comes up faster. Cool. This must be a good item. It sure is. S tier for sure. The Dio's best friend gets an A on the engineer and C on everybody else. So this may surprise some of you. Yes, having a second chance is a cool function. However, as I've stated a few times now, situational items aren't that powerful. Now, consider the fact that many red items are absolutely insane for your character's power as soon as you pick them up, and now Dio's second life doesn't seem too great. This item is literally useless until you mess up and die, and as soon as that happens, it's back to useless. The empty bear it turns into after activation doesn't even count as a white item to trade into a 3D printer. It's completely useless. The only exception is on the engineer, where as long as you don't die, your turrets will get a second life, and this works for every every turret placed until you lose the free life. So A on engineer and C on everybody else. The hard light afterburner gets an S on everybody. Your utility skill is extremely important and valuable. Getting two extra charges of it and reducing the cooldown by a third is very powerful to say the least. If I see these in the Lunar Bazaar, I will always take at least one of them no matter what items I'm risking to trade in. I say it's the best on mercenary due to him essentially getting nine potential dashes out of one afterburner as well as the nice cooldown reduction. So S tier for sure. Wake of Vultures gets a C on everybody. Honestly, I don't feel the power of the vultures really ever. I want it to be good. After all, it is made with the inspiration of the headhunter from Path of Exile, which is many people's like coolest item in the game. But Wake of Vultures does not live up to the hype. Yes, there are tons of elites that spawn later into the game, but the fact that both the damage buffs you get from it scale only off of your base damage, lightning orbs and fire cannot scale with anything but your base damage, and that you essentially lose the ability to heal half of your HP at any given moment when you convert it into shields via the lightning elite, 
rates, it turns into a liability. To reiterate, when you kill a lightning monster, half of your HP goes into shields. You cannot leech or regen shields as you do with health. So if you lose the shield portion of your life, you are immediately susceptible to an instant death due to one shot protection. As I said, one shot protection is in effect as long as your combined max health is at or above 90%. And guess what? Shields don't count towards this. See the issue? No? Okay, don't worry. I'll cover it even further when we talk about the shape class. Anyway, Wake of Vultures isn't terribly useful. I'd say the new Malachi buff is by far the strongest to get, but even then doesn't really do much for you. The downside is too great, so C on everybody. Brain stocks get a D. Another disappointing item, honestly. The best way I can put it for brain stocks is that it just doesn't work like I feel it should. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't make the activation of your skills free, so if you're playing Rex, you will essentially be killing yourself even faster for three seconds, and if your ability has a charge system, you are still relying on the charges coming back up. It's not free. It should say cast your abilities a little faster for three seconds, not your abilities have no cooldown. The global cooldown is still in effect with brain stocks up, so that, combined with it being yet another situational item, puts it in the absolute bottom tier for red items, in my opinion. Very disappointing item. It gets a D. The Reach of Rack gets an S on everybody. More healing. Not dying is good. Healing is not dying. Healing is good. S tier. But again, really, 100% more healing with no downsides whatsoever is absolutely fantastic for literally every character. Yes, someone like Rex does benefit more from it, but its effect is so good on pretty much everybody, so it gets an easy S on everybody. Aegis is the new red item. If you have tons of healing, it gets an S. If you don't, it gets a B. If your passive HP regen counted towards the overheal barrier that Aegis creates, it would be an S at all times. However, leech and regen from things like the gnarled wood sprite or cautious slug are the types of healing that fill up the overhealing, not your region. Therefore, if you don't have very much of that kind of healing, the item isn't terribly useful. It should also be noted that barrier is separate from your combined max health, unlike shields, as in it does not affect one shot protection at all. This is why brooch and Aegis are both very solid items. So S if you have an adequate amount of healing and B if you do not. Moving on to the boss items here, the Titanic Neural gets an A. More HP and more HP region. Compares extremely well with Cautious Slugs because the Neurals add to your base region and the Slug region based off of that amount. Solid item, always nice to see them from the teleporter, so A. Queen's Gland, on the other hand, gets a D. Here's the polar opposite of an item you want to see from the teleporter. Getting this instead of literally any other green item in the game, aside from maybe like Chrono Bobble or Red Whip, of course, feels awful. Again, the AI in this game isn't well, that's smart, and the Beetle Guard is definitely no exception. In fact, he will often just walk around like a gorilla and get stuck in the smallest of corners or inclines. Also, he blocks your shots entirely, so all things considered, the guard is useless. D tier. The Halkion Seed is one of the new boss items, and it gets a C. You get this from killing Aurelianite in the gold portal, so if you activate all seven beacons and then you manage to kill him before you have to reactivate any of those seven, you get this item. Yes, it is a very cool item. Getting to see Aurelianite spawn at every teleporter event you have is awesome for sure. And yes, he is friendly. You do not have to fight him like in the gold portal. You get this, okay? However, again, the AI is just trash. He'll focus the lower HP enemies more often than not. And much like regular Titans can easily mess up his own beam by sticking his head into the ground when they do that bend over attack thingy. Look, it's cool, but it's not that useful. I'd rather get a neural any day. So C. The little disciple gets an A. All right, I actually have not gotten this item yet, but from what I've seen and read, it's pretty good. The wisps if fires have a chance to proc your on hits. And the fact that they come out simply while you sprint means you'll be shooting them off like a Nukahana's, but without the stipulation of healing. Awesome theme, awesome execution, awesome item. A tier. Moving on now to the lunar items. Shaped glass gets an S. All right, finally, we can talk about shaped glass. This is the best item in the game past like four or five stacks. Why? Because of one shot protection. Now, the wording of the item is a bit misleading. It actually doubles your damage and halves your HP for every stack. It's not a simple additive damage bonus like the plus 100% leads you to believe. Meaning if you pick up five shaped glass, yes, you are dividing your total total HP by 32. But guess what? You are also multiplying your damage by 32. 32 times more damage, not 32% more damage. Now you may be thinking, well, if I'm decreasing my HP also by 32 times, isn't that awful? Nope. No. Let's say you have 2000 total health without shields. Five shaped glass means that 2000 is divided by two, five times. So it goes to 1000, then 500, then 250, then 125, and finally 62.5. I don't think it counts decimals actually, so it'd be rounded up to 63. You're total HP with five shaped glass with a base of 2000 would be 60. 
three, meaning if you have capped crit and one or two harvester sites, you can easily fill up your HP in the blink of an eye. Remember, as long as you are at or above 90% HP, you will not die to a single instance of damage. Now, pair that with Leech and the region of a gnarled wood sprite and some rejuve racks especially, not to mention the new barrier stat from Aegis and Brooch, and suddenly the lack of HP actually turns into a blessing rather than a curse. That is, until you pick up a single shield generator. Shape Glass only cuts your health in half, not any shields you have from the shield generator. If you get the lightning aspect from either killing a lightning mob with vultures or you get the aspect as a random drop those shields are reduced accordingly however shield generators are not you're at 63 max health one shield generator adds 25 shield shield counts towards your combined max health and therefore one shot protection meaning as soon as you get hit and lose the shields which if you have that small of a health pool literally any hit will take your shields away instantly the only way to survive is not to get hit until your shields have recharged you cannot leech or rely on region to get back to one shot protection good luck dodging literally any and all forms of damage for seven seconds while you wait for your shields to come back up. So stacking shape glass is absolutely the most powerful combo in the game at the moment and literally one shield generator ruins that combo. Glass gets an S. Brittle crown gets a D. We go from an amazing lunar item to a not so amazing one. Actually, this item sucks. If you block the hit with teddy bears, you still lose the gold. If you take fall damage, you lose the gold. You can make this item work if you get a super god run going with tons of shape glass and a royal capacitor with instant cooldowns and literally just looking at any and everything and watching them die instantly. Sure, you can pick up some crowns, okay. However, if you're at that point, guess what you don't need any more of? Gold. Terrible item in like 99% of runs, so D tier. Transcendence also gets a D. Here's another item I've changed my mind on quite a bit. Doubling your health is pretty good. However, Transcendence does not work like shaped glass. The benefits for stacking multiple aren't nearly as good. Start factoring in the lack of leech and regen. Again, the only way to get shields back is not taking damage for seven seconds, and you could probably see why shields are inferior to health at pretty much every stage. If you don't have a lot of regen or leech, sure try transcendence out but there's no way to get rid of it aside from gambling your entire build at a shrine of order no balls you won't do it so i have to give it a d corpse bloom is still an f Oh, hey, look, it's the worst item in the game. Capping all HP recovery to 10% per second is absolutely awful. Yes, you can get 100% more healing per stack, but guess what? Rejuve Rack does this with literally no downsize. The Rejuve Rack does increase that 10% cap from Corpse Bloom, so if you have one Rejuve and one Corpse Bloom, you will heal 200% more, but capped at 20% per second. But even then, just get two Rejuve Racks. Honestly, this item is garbage. Do not pick it up ever. F tier. Gesture of the Drowned gets an S. The stacking capabilities of Gesture were brought in line with Fuel Cell, in the June update, but the first stack of it is still the same strength. So picking up at least one is still a very good idea. In fact, I kind of prefer the way it is now because it saves me some lunar coins. Once you get one, just rely on fuel cells for even more cooldown reduction instead of gestures. This kind of makes gesture feel like a more powerful standalone item in my opinion, and I like it. Easy S tier. There is basically no downside to activating your equipment automatically, aside from if you have a prey on accumulator and you don't realize it's firing before it's too late, but just use a capacitor instead. Easy. Moving on to the last section, which is equipment. Now, for all these equipments whenever i say the combo it's getting a gesture of the drowned pair with a soul bound catalyst or many of them as well as some fuel cells so anytime i say the combo that's what i'm talking about the disposable missile launcher gets an a with the combo and a c without so it's pretty good if you have the combo each missile has its own proc coefficient meaning you can get up to 12 procs every time you activate it which is not bad at all however realistically there are much better equipment to pick up with the combo and outside of that it's not too powerful so a with the combo c without foreign fruit gets an a with the combo but a d without it. Same with the missile launcher. Pretty good with the combo, getting a free 50% heal. Getting a free 50% heal every few seconds is big and synergizes well with Nukahanas and some Rejuve Racks. However, the healing from a wood sprite with the combo is much more consistent and without the combo, fruit falls flat on its face in terms of overall power. So A with combo, D without. The primordial cube gets a B. Regardless of combo, cube is pretty solid. However, meat hooks are just as good at the very worst than the cube and at best, they provide so much more utility and especially damage. So cube has its own place, especially without the hooks but again i value damage and healing not necessarily utility for my equipment so b the ocular hud if you do not have capped crit gets an s on rex and a b on everybody else if you have capped crit it's an f so if you have capped crit this item is literally useless do not pick it up if you have 100 crit chance aside from that i really don't ever use it outside of the first loop but within that it definitely is a solid choice rex is actually crazy good with it on the first loop because his total damage output is the highest in the game if we're talking solely from abilities and not items and the rate at which you can spam M2 on Rex, which is where the damage comes from, is very fast. Like, very fast. Getting 100% crit chance and spamming M2 on Rex will kill the teleporter boss in under 3 seconds 
easily. Yes, that is without any damage items. So S on Rex if you don't have cap crit and B on everybody else. But if you have cap crit, don't pick it up. The backup, on the other hand, just gets an F at all times. It's another cool item in concept that in reality is absolutely awful. The drones can tank enemies for you, sure, but they have very little HP. Yes, they do some damage, but they have very little damage compared to you and especially any other equipment you can pick up. Honestly, the drones are straight up useless. Don't try to tell me that with the combo they become amazing because guess what? Every other equipment would be light years ahead with the same combo. Backup sucks. Only pick it up if you have no other choices around F. The prey on accumulator gets an A. A very strong choice in any run, especially the first loop. However, past the first loop, I find a capacitor outclasses it in both damage and consistency and absolutely is better than the prey on with the combo. So definitely pick up the prey on in earlier stages, but as soon as you get some on hit items going and if you get the combo up and running, especially trade it out for the royal capacitor. Also, if you guys watch my streams, the prey on accumulator is the BFG that I refer to. BFG is the big freaking gun from Doom and they pretty much function identically. So if you ever hear me refer to the prey on as BFG, that's why. The Milky Chrysalis is a C. Not going to say much here. I like damage and healing. Flying is utility. It's okay. It's fun if you have the combo and fly around all the time. But again, I'd rather have other equipment personally. C for me. The Royal Capacitor is an S. The Capacitor is the best equipment in the game. Not only does it deal a huge chunk of damage, but it also has a 20 second cooldown. Like, holy crap. It is so much better than every other equipment that I honestly thought the cooldown would be increased in the June update at the very least. But nope, this bad boy went untouched and is easily my go-to equipment in every run. Now, if I'm stacking Shape Glass or playing Rex, I do prefer the Wood Sprite over Capacitor, but you still can't go wrong with it at any point. S tier for sure. The Crowdfunder gets an F. Okay, this one is pretty bad too. The backup has a friend down in F tier with the Crowdfunder. The only redeeming quality to it is that each shot can proc your on-hit items. The Gold It Drains is irrelevant past the second loop, but again, any other equipment aside from the backup is better than this item. Do not pick it up early on because you'll lose all your gold. Later on, don't pick it up because it sucks. F tier. The Gnarled Wood Sprite is an S if you're stacking shaped glass and a B if you're not. As I said, this is my favorite equipment when stacking shaped glass. The passive region it applies as well as the 10% heal when activated is super powerful and definitely is enough to keep you alive after getting hit. Basically, it will instantly put you back up to one shot protection if you have like four or five shaped glass and the equipment combo. If you aren't stacking glass and you don't have the combo, it is still a solid equipment, especially on Rex, so I'll give it a B. Otherwise, it's an S. The radar scanner gets an F. I got you one more item in F tier. Literally, just learn the spawns. Learn where chests and shrines and teleporters can spawn and just use your eyeballs. Honestly, your eyeballs are probably better than this thing because the question marks it puts on the screen are very hard to see with more than like 10. And believe me, there will be more than 10. Useless equipment, F tier. And yes, even with the equipment drone. The eccentric vase is a new equipment and it's a D. This is another new addition from the June update and well, it's cool, yeah, but it's not very useful. You can get around the map pretty quickly on everybody so it's not special in that regard. Basically, this creates a warm hole looks like a zip line so that's what i call it that allows you to travel between two points on the map but if you use the interact key to take the zip line and then press it again you will exit the zip line you are not immune to damage while in the zip line and the momentum takes quite a bit of time to ramp up to a fast speed so you're pretty much just asking to die if you use it later on in a run not that good so d tier lastly the fuel array here i thought of not putting this here at all because it's literally just used to unlock the new character rex so once you get him do not ever pick this thing up unless you're doing a challenge run which i may do in the future actually if you don't know, falling below 50% HP with this equipment will blow you up and you die. I'm not going to give it a ranking because it really isn't like the other equipment. Also, if you haven't unlocked Rex, check out my video on how to get him. Link in the top right. Moving on to lunar equipment, the glowing meteorite gets a D. Meteorite is basically a meme item. It's cool, but the downside is that it just also kills you. I'd rather not be Indiana Jones hopping around avoiding boulders falling from the sky at all points, so I give this a D tier. If you want some fun though, pick this up with the combo and you'll have tons of fun, trust me. The Hellfire Tincture gets an F, even on the Mercenary. Tincture was slightly buffed recently, but it doesn't make a difference. Losing your HP over time while dealing a tiny bit of damage relative to your total damage output, as well as having it in a tiny radius, makes this garbage equipment. Even on the mercenary who was always in melee range, yes. Now, if they added a proc coefficient to this, like the Frost Relic has, then it would be not absolute dumpster fire trash, just like regular trash, like the Frost Relic. Tincture gets an F. The Effigy of Grief also gets an F. Wow, another item with a tiny radius that also has a huge downside. You cannot throw the Effigy, meaning whenever you place it, it will instantly be below you and thus you are slowed and take increased damage. Even if you don't get out of the AOE quickly, the effect of the item is pretty bad and not worth your equipment slot. The Spinal Tonic gets an S only if you can permanently keep it up. If you can't, it gets an 
F. If you can get this thing to 100% uptime, it is very powerful. Definitely worth the equipment slot. However, the drawback of it having a chance to create a stackable debuff on every use is terrible. If it didn't stack, it would be one thing, but it does and it's awful. So S tier if you can keep this up at all times, F tier if not. Trust me, do not pick it up without permanent uptime. You will regret it. Now, aspects aren't really equipment, but rather a passive item that takes your equipment slot. You can't really use them. You just get their benefits at all times. Rather, benefits and air quotes. They are basically the effects of each elite monster type. So you have one for fire, one for lightning, cold, and malachite. They are a very rare drop from the respective elite at 0.05%. So every fire elite you kill has a 0.05% chance to drop its aspect. The same for lightning, cold, and malachite. Sadly, the only one worth the equipment slot is the malachite one. And even then, I'd still rather have a wood sprite or a capacitor, probably even prey on. So fire, lightning, and cold get an F only because the aspect takes your equipment slot. If it was a passive item, they would be different. For the malachite one, I'll give it an A. It seems interesting, and from what I've heard, uh, yes, I actually haven't got it yet. The little spiky orbs it creates are pretty useful, so I'm looking forward to testing it out. Just know there is not a lot of info on it yet. For the rest, do not pick them up. All right, and that brings me to the end of version two of the item and equipment tier list. There are bound to be some disagreements with what I've said here, so please leave any and all comments and feedback below. I read them all, I promise. Again, you can check out my content on Twitch at twitch.tv slash woollygaming, and if you'd like notifications whenever I go live or a place to reach out to me and especially to talk to others about the game, consider joining our Discord server. Links to both will be in the description and my pinned comment below. Thank you for watching and be on the lookout for my Rex character guide.